There's a lot you can learn from out of the past. Welcome, I'm Lenny, this is Jim. We're here for Martin County Historical Society's Out of the Past. And today we've got a really interesting interview. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, you brought a couple things, didn't you, Jim? Yes, A couple I things did. of interest from the museum? Yeah, some things we just very recently got in. This here is a racing uniform from or Carl Nedefee. Carl Nedefee, Al Carl, brought it sure. in. Carl was his father. You probably remember Carl Nedefee in Fairmont. He was the animal control uh, person for a number of years. He was also the 1948 champion at Rio Speedway. And that was down in Texas, I think. I believe so. And to go with it, a really awesome picture of him in his sprint car. I believe they called these midgets. Is that correct? Could be. Midget and it racing. was in Harlington, Texas is where he raced. Yeah. He lived down there for a number of years before he moved up to Fairmont. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Awesome that they brought that in. It'll be great to add to our collection. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Jim, should we take a look at that interview with Jeff and Jay Balcom? Really interesting. They mm -hmm. had a lot of things to say, a lot of information. So, yeah, let's take a look at it. Well, that sounds good. Okay, I'm excited today to talk to Jeff and Jay Balcom. And uh, to begin with, this is Jeff. This is Jay. Uh, I'd like to have you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, just briefly. Let's we'll start with Jeff. Well, I'm the younger brother of Jay and uh, John and then uh, sister Linda and I was the youngest of three boys and I have all the stitches in the family because <laughs> I kept coming back and that's probably why I became a pretty decent wrestler and um, but my sister I she's my favorite sister Linda Stouter is her name and uh, I life was good I thought I would be the youngest you know and be the baby of the family but it turns out that uh, she came along four years later and the only girl, so she was quote spoiled, and I became the you guys weren't though yeah, and I became the <laughs> neglected third child is what it is. So, but somehow I made it through this tough life, and uh, we're here today. Well, things are tough all over, Jay. Okay. Well, I uh, I'm the oldest one of the Balcom siblings, and uh, I have uh, I grew, went to uh, Fairmont High School and uh, class of '82 graduate and. Uh, I uh, from then went to auctioneering school oh. and um, became an auctioneer and been auctioning uh, ever since then. That was a two-week course and we went down pretty intense and uh, down to Mason City, Iowa. And uh, after that I did a started my auction career okay. and that was in 82. And uh, so then I uh, got married in 87 and, and uh, my wife Mary is uh, and to my wife Mary, and we had uh, we got five kids, and and uh, we lived uh, east of town, out uh, uh, by the Rose Lake Golf Course in that area. And we we have uh, farmland, and and and, uh, and I collect tractors and uh, do a lot of other things. We do petting zoos and all kinds of stuff like that. Are you you're kind of the one in charge of the implement dealership then, or both of you do that? Well, uh, our implement shop is. Uh, uh, we have four four of us own it now. Okay. Myself and John, my brother John, and these, uh, and then Jeff, and then Linda Linda Stouter is she uh, is all part of it too. So we kind of kind of run it together and, and kind of do what we need to do to try to get parts and sure. out to people in the mail order and so on. Okay, and you both are you both auctioneer then? Yeah, I I went through auction school in 1984. Okay. I got my driver's license when I was a sophomore in high school and I went to Mason City as well. Okay. And there was there was two auction comp auction schools there at that time. Jay went to the tough one. He had like the boot camp. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they couldn't leave the thing. And we, our, mine was in a motel for one week. And so that was a, probably an easier course. But I figured that, you know, Jay came back and he's, you know, they, they, had, to, they had to actually smuggle a pizza and he was in there with some Canadians, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, the room was uh, two people from Canada, and they were they got hungry one night, so they they slipped out and uh, got a got a pizza, so huh. brought in for well, us. Well, like talk a little more about that in a minute, but I'd like to ask you, Jeff, about your uh, wrestling experiences. Well, yeah, you know, uh, Jay was uh, my older brother, four years older than I, five years actually. He taught you everything you knew. Well, pretty good, and uh, John was smaller, you know, so uh, you know he we, he just. Uh, ran from Jay and I basically, but the older we got. But uh, anyhow, uh, 
Jay was my tough, toughest competitor in high school. He came in and worked out uh -huh. and got me better. But uh, I had Randy Hines came in and worked out as an alumni because you just can't go to the next weight at heavyweight to, to get a tougher uh, wrestle, you know, to get a, an opponent to challenge you. And uh, Bing Salak, he came in, you know, most of my Bing's a pretty good guy. Mm -hmm. And then the late uh, Danny Banks just passed away, and he came in a few times and uh, worked out as well, you know, with, with me. and uh, Pretty good background in training. Then. And so that's how I was able to, you know, go all the way through to be a state champion because I'd wrestled tough competition in the wrestling room. and uh, So you're high school state champion? Yeah. What year was that? That was 1986 for okay. Fairmont, and Fairmont's first state champion. And then, you know, the letters came and offers came from, I could have gone to Nebraska, Iowa State, or Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And a guy by the name of Jay Robinson was just starting out that year as head coach at Minnesota. And he coached under Dan Gable for quite a few years, and they won nine straight national titles together. And he has camps all over the country. And so Jay started, I started the same uh, as Jay Robinson. And I was the first guy to make it through four years with him because there was a lot of changes in that first four years. Sure. We went from uh, basically didn't win a Big Ten dual meet my first year to uh, being Big Ten runner-ups my junior year, and including I was a Big Ten finalist, lost three to two in the finals. But uh, so we we improved, or if you didn't improve, you weren't on the team anymore, kind of a deal. Mm. Okay. And uh, but it's it's a it's a tough way to get through college. I think probably golf is probably easier. <laughs> but uh, so I'm not a golfer. You have then. Yeah, I just scholarship. I went in on a half ride, and then uh, after I was in the top ten in the country my last two years, I kind of arbitrated back, and they gave me a, a full ride then for yeah. for wrestling, which is which is very tough to do get a full ride in, in wrestling. Sure, there's only ten scholarships and there's ten weights, and sure. So I got one one of those whole scholarships, and that, that was really nice. Good. Well, you know, in your auctioneering, I'll bet you had some kind of unique experiences, both of you probably did. Can you share with us some of those unique and interesting experiences you had as far as auctioneering? Well, you know, uh, each auction is different. Mm -hmm. and uh, But, you know, in this area we have a high quality of auctioneers, and, you know, we haven't done a lot of auctions in Martin County, actually, you know, because we have quality auctioneers. and You and go all around the country? We, we've been all over, you know, the United States doing some auctions. Really? Wow. And, uh, but uh, the it's kind of like wrestling. You know, wrestling, they go, you know, when I signed on Division One, you'll never make it, Division One. You know, you'll never make it, you know. And if you listen to that, and Jay will probably correlate to this too, you know, if, if we listened to everybody that told us we couldn't make it in wrestling, you know, we might as well just, you know, close the door and forgot about it. But uh, right. Jay is in the state tournament, and he only had three losses this whole senior year as well, and state tournament 185, and, you know, mm -hmm. we we're both on conference championship tournament teams, and old Coach Parker, he always reminded me of Rocky's uh, Burgess Meredith, was it? The, the guy, he asked me, boy, little guy, but Coach Parker was a great wrestling coach, and, and Parker says, you know, he says, winners never quit, and quitters never win. You know, and, <laughs> you know, he... You know, those, that's back in the tough days of coaching where, you know, you, you, you got in somebody's face and it's sure. changed it quite a bit now. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think uh, between that and then, you know, our dad was a workaholic. And so, you know, he'd come home no matter what time of the night with the machinery or something. Well, we got to unload this. We can't wait till morning. Nope, we got to get it done now or something. And you kind of get acclimated and that's what kind of puts you through life. Mm -hmm. But if you can do it in athletics... You can do it in a business setting, setting as well. You just got to say, well, the world is bigger than one county. And see, I wrestled sure. in 34 states. You know, so there's also auctions all over the country. So if, if it's uh, in one territory, uh, there isn't a lot of auctions you can do or it's overpopulated auctioneers, well, you can go to the next county or mm -hmm. state. And so we ended up doing a lot of these state out Minnesota auctions. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that led to this, the most unique one we ever did was the State of Minnesota Commerce Department auction back in 1993. And that was uh, sold in Roy Wilkins Auditorium. And we had 13 states attend unclaimed safe deposit boxes and uh, very, very neat items there. And, uh, and we, we over doubled the appraisal and uh, a, very, a very unique uh, experience to do. And, 
Another one we did for the state as well as we did uh, about every four or five years, they do, uh, we did uh, unclaimed, or not unclaimed, repossessed uh, items from the DNR. That was up at Grand Rapids, Minnesota. And we're going back a long time ago. I was pretty young. I was 24 years old when I booked that uh, Commerce Department auction, did it. And Jay and I went up there and had a fun time. But it seems like yesterday, babe, but <laughs> time just flies, didn't it, Jay? Yeah, and, uh, it goes on. Do you remember, Jay, uh, what happened? We don't, We had to be up to this, these other state auctions. We do sell state trooper vehicles, model vehicles, and mm -hmm. different spots. And uh, we're at Grand Rapids doing this uh, rifle auction and, and surplus auction. And they just took them out, and they did felony checks, and we took them out one by one, and they sold. And there's, we had over 800 people attend that auction, and mm -hmm. it was probably, you know, probably closer to 1,200 people there because some people were tapping their buddy because, you know, they had to buy the gun back because he couldn't, you know. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a deal. But uh, the day before, I was going to say, Jay, do you remember what incident uh, happened the day before uh, that auction in Grand Rapids? Uh, the day before, I think that was uh, when uh, the O.J. Simpson uh, chase was going on. Oh, very and good. It came on television there, and yeah. so we were there a day early, so we kind of watched that. We we took uh, we were the so, white Bronco. We were at a, you know, we had that chase for several hours, <laughs> sure. and so on. So it kind of uh, remember kind of reminds us when the time of the auction, you know, when we did the auction, the date of the auction yeah. and stuff was that time. So, and uh, the other unique one is in Laverne, Blue Mountain State Park. I'll let Jay talk a little about that. Yeah, we did an auction for, we sold live buffalo in uh, Laverne, Minnesota. And uh, we uh, uh, we got, uh, we had a guy, a guy came there from El Algona, Iowa area, and he uh, sold his cattle, or excuse me, he sold his hogs. Mm -hmm. And he said he was going to get into the buffalo, so he uh, anyway he bought uh, buffalo and they sold. Uh, I don't know. We must have sold what about thirty head, yeah, right? probably something there, like right? that. Auctioned them off. Auctioned mm -hmm. them off. Yeah, Blue Mountain State Park. They they take a pickup out uh, and they with feed and then the the, the buffalo follow them right in oh. and they corral them up there and everything. But uh, uh, but anyway we. Uh, uh, sold a bunch of those uh, buffalo, and uh, we we got remarkable price on them. We yeah. got like forty 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 three hundred dollars for the for a uh, a cow uh, bull or a, uh, was a uh, excuse me a buffalo cow, really? and uh, oh. that was record sales for that. They never got that kind of money, so that was kind of nice. How, uh, how, how would that compare to like a steer price wise? Well. Uh, it's it's quite a bit quite a bit higher than that. Quite a bit higher than that. Uh, you know, and then they it, it's mellowed out quite a bit now. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, difference between a steer and and a and a bison or buffalo is uh, the the steer will dress out a lot better. You know, sixty percent or so. Mm -hmm. And there's only about forty percent of a buffalo that'll dress out. But you have things you can sell. You know, like the big buffalo sure. head and different things. But but bison is lower in fat than turkey and chicken, mm -hmm. uh, if yeah, you knew that at all. So who who is buying these buffalo? Well, people that uh, they're they're starting to raise them, and uh, you know there's ranches that people have them, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so each year they they still have that. But we we kind of got to a point where we needed to do all the state auctions or you know uh, get out of it, and we I said why don't we set up a yearly deal on these because there's just us and another auction company doing them and. Let's just go with a major bid, and then I won't worry about it. But we didn't underbid that company, and then so uh, we, uh, we we stopped doing them. But they were fun, and with, with what we did. Uh, but uh, there was a big cat, big yeah. catwalk that you stood on when you sold these oh. buffalo, and you, everybody was up there, and you you'd uh, they bring the buffalo through, and then you're just on this catwalk around there, so you view them and everything and anyway uh, Garth Garth Brooks a country singer was popular at that time and Jeff was in the Garth Brooks he had a gar fancy Garth Brooks hat oh, yeah. and uh, anyway it was real windy there that day and wouldn't you know it Jeff's hat blew off down in the down in the uh, buffalo corral there and uh, I said oh no I said how are you going to get that now well, they had one of the um, ranch hands there that was down in there trying to get the uh, buffalo, the buffalo away from the hat, and, uh -huh. and I told uh, the coordinator uh, of the buffalo auction there. The 
I said, boy, I said, that guy really knows what he's doing. And Merlin then, Johnson. And, and yeah. he says, uh, he said, no, he said, I think he's just stupid. He said, <laughs> yeah. Chase him up being in there with a live buffalo like that. But uh, he got Jeff's hat, and Jeff's hat was un untouched. So yeah. it was okay. Oh, well, that's funny. The guy's name was Merlin Johnson. That was the deal. And he's sitting like Humpty Dumpty with his legs over the top of the crowd <laughs> recording. And we did it two years in a row, and this is the second year. And he says, I said, the wind's windy again today, and then, you know, my hat blew off, of course. And he said, the wind never stops here, it just changes direction in Laverne. And uh, I said, that was, that was pretty good. But that thing, this Tim was going to replace him, and he was down there. And, and it, like Jay said, he's pretty good with those Buffalo. He must know what he's doing. And, and this Merlin Johnson looked like Frazier's dad in the, in the sitcom. Sure. And he just kind of spent an image to him, and he looks up and just, nah, he's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I watched the uh, CD <laughs> that you guys gave me. And I heard a little bit about this from Jeff uh, and you too, Jay, before, but the tractor story, the UDLX, did I say that right? Yeah, yes. UDLX. Um, kind of tell us about what happened there. That, that's really a, an interesting uh, I'll long term I'll let Jeff start that off because Jeff went uh, on the internet and did the work to find it. So. Okay. Yeah, well, um, we, uh, I, bond, I went to, with my dad to a lot of these Minneapolis Moline shows, and they have auctions, that, and we actually hosted the two shows here in 91 and 99, mm -hmm. we two club shows, but uh, well, Jay and I would volunteer our time if we're there at the uh, if we're there at the event and auction off things, but so a lot of people know us in the world, and, and uh, dad's UDLX, uh, it was stolen off a lot in 1964, I was born in 68, so I, all I did is hear about it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, anyhow, I advertised in the Minneapolis Moline magazines, and a guy emailed me looking for rear tires for a UDLX and possibly one rim. Uh, and they're 32 inch tires on that tractor, and it's, it's kind of just you know unique or indigenous to that tractor uh, because 32 inch tires weren't popular at all. And it's the only tractor I know that had 32 inch tires on it. What year was that tractor? 1938. Yeah. 38. And they built it to uh, to go down to downtown with your with your sweetheart at a flip seat and 40 mile road gear in it. And it was the the modern day era, the first tractor ever factory tractor built with a factory cab. Hmm. And uh, but they're kind of cumbersome for big guys like I and Jay and I to get in. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's like Jay bought a Corvette for his girl and went through the parade with him, and he, you know. You gotta, you know, take a, you know, a shoehorn to get him back out, you know, and, and, and I'm in the same same boat. But you know, one of his, I was standing next to fellow wrestler Joe Burns, and uh, the the famous artist and, sure. and uh, Joe Jr. And, and he says, "Is Jed Jay in that Corvette?" Yeah, yeah. He, his daughter wanted a Corvette, so he's reliving his childhood dream. <laughs> but uh, we we both had a laugh then. But uh, yeah, so the Udell X is a, the most sought after collector tractor in the world as far as they only built 150 of them because they were kind of like the Duesenberg car. They couldn't afford them that, you know, uh -huh. they were quite pricey back then. But they've gone from probably in the 80s, you could buy one for 40000 mm -hmm. In the 90s, you're crowding, you know, eighty to 100000 And now the record price is, I think, 236000 one sold for. Wow. But you won't, you won't touch... One even in a non-running condition for under a hundred thousand right now, hmm. right now. So uh, <clears throat> that's uh, it's, so it's it, better than money in the bank kind of a deal. It's safe to say you probably aren't going to donate that to the museum then. Well, you know, you know, you, know, you never know, but uh, pro <laughs> probably, probably not. But it's it's, it's always good to ask. Though, yeah. Isn't it? Well, you know, yeah, you don't know. You don't, don't, don't know ask. if you don't ask. <laughs> so uh, so we've had it out and paraded it a little bit, but. Uh, and it's it's a nice nice thing to have, kind of kind of dad's fingerprint uh, is what I call it. And you restored it too. And well, it was restored fairly well, and uh, but uh, actually, um, we had to restore quite a bit of the cab and so mm -hmm. forth as well. But but anyhow, through that email, I said, Dad, I think I found your tractor. And then they were talking on the phone, this guy and him and. And uh, he said, yeah, it's got a ball from up on stencil in the cab. And at that point, my dad says, I'd like to take a look at this tractor. And he hung the phone up. And, okay, so this guy knew. You know? yeah. So he was assuming that my dad had passed away and we wouldn't be able to get this tractor back. So, uh, But we had, dad did all the depositions. And 
you know, it's a bittersweet thing. Life is that uh, and you don't know what curve it's going to throw you. It was impounded in 2005, and then through litigation and everything, it took two years of litigation, and my dad passed away before uh, uh, it was released. But he had all the depositions and so forth. And uh, but uh, Dad always had a rainbow on his business cards pointing down the Minneapolis Moline logo. And at the shows, he said, what do you got this rainbow in your card for? And he said, the gold tractor's at the end of the rainbow. Hmm. And that night, the night it was released, Mom almost, she says, look at this, Jeff. And we looked outside, and we get the tractor back home, and there was a rainbow behind our house here in Fairmont. Hmm. So uh, quite a deal. And then I sure. bought an original brochure, and the printing date on that, Jay said, look at the printing date on this. It's very small. And it was 12, 15, and 38. That was my dad's exact birthday. <laughs> so I guess he was meant to have the tractor, you know. But uh, where where was the tractor located? I was in Essex, Minnesota, small town in between Sleepy Eye and New Ulm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the person that took it actually came to your lot and loaded well, it up and took it. Or? Mom and Dad were off on a, a trip to the state of Washington. They were out there and they came back and. That tractor was stolen off the lot, and Dad made deliveries with it. And uh, it has a long, narrow window in the back. And uh, anyhow, the guy that had it was 69 at the time of the trial. My dad died at 69, so they're about the same, same size, same build. Yeah. And there's a guy by Truman. I think he Dad said it was a Schoen, wasn't it? Oh, well, the Schoen, Schoen brothers. But anyhow, he he waved at Dad, thinking that Dad uh, was in that tractor, so they drove it off the lot. Oh. And so it was, it was a two-person operation because this guy said he got it from his dad, uh -huh. you know, and hmm. uh, and so uh, you know it could have been could have been this guy actually in the cab with his dad and they took it, but they never did prosecute. Uh, they never admitted to stealing it. They didn't know where the the they got the tractor. And the ninety-three-year-old mother testified didn't know where he got the tractor. If you have something that unique, you know where you got it. Yeah. So yeah. they are either covering up somebody that. Bought a hot tractor, or or something else. But uh, you know, we talked to Jerry not one time. There's an actually a rift after ring around that area too with tractors mm -hmm. in the early '70s. Oh, sure. And now, just lately in the news, there was an internet thing that uh, around that area that people were trying to sell equipment that they didn't have too. So hmm. uh, maybe uh, maybe it's it's bred into them. I don't know. I don't know up there. But uh, I've got a lot of good people from from that area too, and. Uh, we had a lot of a good clients in, in the Hanska area and uh, New Ulm area, and uh, none of them knew this guy or knew knew they had the tractor either. So, didn't do them any good because they had to hide it. You know, they. Well, it's good you got it back. Yeah, yeah. it really is a unique yeah. unique piece, no question yeah. about it. Do you have any other really unique uh, pieces of implement? Well, I've I've been collecting a little bit. I have some front wheel assist tractors out there called a Minneapolis Wing Six Hundred Four. They built 53 of them in the gas uh, model, and I have uh, two of them. And then I bought, and I hadn't seen more than probably three of them in my lifetime. And but it rains, it pours, and you know, the other thing is the internet. You know, everything's close to you. you know? Sure. And so one I had to go to Michigan. The other one I had to, was in Iowa. And then I bought a diesel, and it's pretty tough looking, but it runs. It's all complete. They built 99 of them. And so that's my third one of the Minneapolis Moline 604s that I have. And I had to go to Nebraska to get that one. But uh, And then I've got a 955, which is the latest one, with a factory canopy on it. That one's a real pretty one out there now. And uh, <clears throat> that has the Minneapolis Moline engine and the Oliver back half on that one. Oh. Because when White bought them out, it was Minneapolis Moline, Oliver, and Cockshot. And they'd build different combinations of tractors that way, and some of them end up being hybrids. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the one of the prettiest hybrids you're going to have. And then uh, I kind of like the Minneapolis Moline tractors, but uh, Jay's got a pretty good Marat and Menagerie of all his tractors. And uh, if you get a chance, it's out front right now. Uh, he's got his John Deere Glory B, and. Uh, he got a son-in-law that likes John Deere's, and so I'll let him share that one if you want to tell that story. Yeah, we were up to, uh, <clears throat> a couple of years ago, we were up to the sewer uh, swap meet they have every April. <clears throat> in the, and by the sewer, between the center and the sewer, 
at the fairgrounds up there. And anyway, uh, just happened to walk through and anyway, I saw this uh, John Deere B. It was painted up red, white, and blue, and it had stars stars on it, and it yeah. said said Deere Glory on it and uh, on the side of it. And I figured, you know, I told my son-in-law, I said, you know, I said, what do you think of that? He said, well, you know, he said, I like, I like them all original with green. And I said, well, I said, you know, the way this country is going, I said, we've got to show some, uh, I like the idea of the patriotism, the patriotism you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to, I said, I think I need to buy that. And so <laughs> anyway, a guy who talked to him up, uh, he was from Wisconsin that restored it. Sure. And... Uh, and he painted it red, white, and blue, and he was doing parades, and he was doing tractor pulling with it and stuff. And so I said, well, uh, asked him what he had to have for it, you know, and, and he said, I got to have 2,500, he said. And I says, well, that's probably probably all right, you know, but I said, I don't know if I want to give that. Well, I said, I'm going to go look around a little bit, and I said, I'll stop back before I leave. And once you know it, he says, uh, I ended up getting it for eighteen hundred and fifty dollars, uh, and so, but that was well worth it because when we went to uh, we went and loaded it up and took it home, mm -hmm. I went to, I really got a lot of lot of people looking at the tractor and sure. a lot of thumbs up for the the patriotism of the tractor and mm -hmm. it was really rewarding. Okay. So I plan on keeping that one around and mm -hmm. and probably giving it to. One of my, one of my kids or my grandkids or something because they really like it and so on. Sure. So, and so that's just something different that I, yeah. I thought my, it's nothing nothing special otherwise about it but the paint job. Yeah. And then uh, you asked about some other, other uh, <clears throat> uh, tractors that you know, are kind of unique. I went to uh, the Illinois Kentucky border and I bought a, I bought it over the internet by an auction that way, but. Uh, from a guy that had a tremendous collection of Molines and Case and a whole, whole bunch of other tractors also of different brands. Mm -hmm. uh, he was into Minneapolis and Case. But anyway, he had, uh, uh, I, I bought <coughs> tractors down there from him. One was a G705 Moline, and they're they're fairly common. But mm -hmm. the other one was a uh, BF uh, Avery, and Minneapolis Moline bought out the, the Avery company and added to their line in, in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, anyway, but this Avery that he had was all restored. <coughs> and it was all, uh, I'd seen it before, a number sure. of years ago, but I didn't realize that, that it was a high crop. And uh, so this, I, I bought it and I went down to get it and here the front end is sitting way up in the air. And uh, you almost have to get a ladder to get out of it, short-legged mm -hmm. guy like me. And so, anyway, I climbed up there, climbed up there, loaded up, and well, then I did some research on it, and here it was a, here it was a BF Avery high crop. They call it a BFH, and uh, they only made, uh, I think they made like uh, 50 or 60 of them, something like that, and uh, maybe a few more. I don't know. They might show up, you know. But uh, sure. anyway, so that's kind of a nice piece that I have. Mm -hmm. I've been, and I took that one around. I took the both took that John Deere, and I took the. Avery out to the Martin County Fair mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, for tractor shows. And it seemed like the people liked it. So, mm -hmm. so and then yep. another another unique piece in the Moline line is we have a Minneapolis Moline uh, crane, and they mm -hmm. uh, it was made on a was made back in the fifties on a it was the crane part was made by Duluth uh, Clyde Ironworks. Ironworks up in Duluth, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know those. Uh, tractor companies, they had other companies build stuff on them for them, sure. you know. And as far as we know, there's uh, there's probably, uh, I think there's less than, there's nine or ten of them that they found that are, that uh, these cranes, so they, they were pretty, mm -hmm. pretty rare too. Yeah, yeah. But the crane would, uh, yeah, it would pick up uh, like a, you know, a 10,000 pound tractor. Mm -hmm. You know, it had a, and ours is a unique one, is uh, it's, uh, we have a long, a long boom uh, mm -hmm. a longer boom on it. Most of them have a shorter boom on it. So uh, ours is kind of a unique piece there too. So, sure. so kind of kind of proud to have yeah. that too. It has a big counterweight at the back and I looked one time and you can see through the, it been painted over, but the Weyerhaeuser company. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what he's used up, you know, it was built Water. up in Duluth around there for unloading railroad cars mm -hmm. or ships or, sure. Lumber or, or, or something, you know. Yeah. 
but uh, that that kind of draw the conclusion in the history on that one. Okay. Well, thank you guys for visiting with us. Is there anything we missed that you'd like to bring up regarding either auctioneering or implement or wrestling? Well, <laughs> you know, we're we're kind of not that busy anymore. We, we shifted. Don't do much in the auction business anymore, but we'll do one now and then. That all changed due to COVID and everything as sure. well, and a lot of things done online, but we're more into the collector series. And then, uh, you know, um, the old FFA motto, what is it, Jay? Learning to do, doing to learn, earning to live, living to Love serve. To serve yeah. Jay and I were both in FFA and presidents in that, and, mm -hmm. and so it's good to see Fairmont's back and having a good ag program. And uh, the vocational wing is wonderful now as well out there at the high school. But, you know, I think, you know, everybody can always say we give more, but we, we've done our share to kind of give back a little bit to the community and uh, keep the history going. And uh, a few years back, the, our, we're extinct now as Cardinals, as, as wrestlers, but we're Red Bulls now, and that's quite... Wow. Oh, sure. And uh, my mother had was from Sherburn, and my un uncles and that were from Sherburn, and... We, I didn't beat Sherburn. Did you guys beat Sherburn? And we lost by one point to Sherburn in our dual meet, my junior year. But we were both in the conference championship teams. But Sherburn always is good. Mm -hmm. But the combination and the Red Bulls have been together about 14, 15 years. And they've been in the state tournament, I think, six times. So that allowed me to talk on the radio now. Oh, sure. And I don't yeah. know if I've done such a good or bad job. But now I've been doing football this year with Dan Brookins as well. But... Uh, I kind of really enjoy uh, kind of doing some flashbacks and some mysteries and some yeah. old time, and uh, I really, really enjoy talking about it, but we have quality products here for sports and Fairmont to talk about, so it's it makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's, uh, it's kind of fun to give back to that, and then now uh, Jay's daughter moved back here, and we've got uh, little Mason, and he'll be a second grader, he's in the Red Bulls feeder program, and uh, oh. In his first year, he went twenty-one and three. So I think he's he's, he's good. He does have a little prevent for potential, little guy, and so that's kind of fun. And uh, you know, uh, Fairmont's a, a great town to be in, and uh, a lot of people. Some some we're getting to the age where a lot of our classmates are are coming back and moving back here to right. uh, yeah. to uh, spend their last years in, in Fairmont. So it's you know, Fairmont. I don't know. It's, it's a good place to come back to, and uh, we do have excellent uh, people around here, excellent businesses, and, and we have a lot of second and third generation businesses, which really, which really says something about uh, Fairmont. So, sure. Jay, do you have anything? There's one thing I was going to say. Uh, I uh, really enjoyed uh, Lenny's uh, book on uh, Martin County history. I think, oh, thank uh, you. I, think uh, I would recommend that to anybody, and it's... Uh, it's a must uh, see, a must, must see read. and read thing because uh, a lot of hard work went into that, and like I say, uh, really appreciate you doing that for the area. Oh, thank you. So, thank you. I enjoy doing yeah. it. Yeah. So, and thanks for having us. Oh well, appreciate it very much, and I expect maybe uh, Monday Night Football with Al Michaels or something in the future for you. Or? Well, I don't know about that, but uh, Dan Brookins and I, I think <laughs> that's as, that's as good as they're going to get. But uh, you know, a lot of a lot of fun we're having, and. Uh, um, so, but, um, yeah, I really enjoy this and thank you guys for taking the time to, to get us corralled in here and, and doing an interview. And, uh, like I say these days, stay powerful America. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Appreciate your positive comments. <laughs> about and everything. Yeah. So. Okay. Wow. That was really an interesting interview. Yeah. With it. You ever seen tractors like that? Are you familiar with those old tractors? No, not myself. I was I was a town kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And the auctioneering too. Yeah. yeah. They really did a lot of lot of interesting things. And, Historic. And they those guys are characters and they've got quite a history right. that goes along with that. And Especially a tractor that was stolen. Yeah, that's a pretty wild story. Wow. That, yeah. that was really interesting to, to learn about. So definitely. Well, we certainly want to thank uh, Jeff and Jay Balcom for sharing their story with us yep. and we want to thank you at home or wherever you're at for tuning in to Martin County's Out of the Past.